From today's event, I want to address the Muslim community worldwide. When you look at the present state of our Muslim community, we see that our scholars are constantly studying, memorizing, interpreting, and explaining the Holy Quran and Hadith. They are delivering religious speeches, emphasizing the dignity of the Messenger of Allah and the greatness of Islam in front of the people. Muslims are engaging in various deeds to earn Allah's satisfaction. However, despite these efforts, there is injustice and unrest prevailing worldwide. At this moment, wars are ongoing in 33 countries. Each country is experiencing instability and turmoil politically, socially. There are thefts, robberies, crimes, murders, and rapes. Economically, there is inflation, rising commodity prices, and famine. Muslims are suffering the most in this situation. Millions of Muslims worldwide are leading miserable lives in various countries, including Palestine and Myanmar. Muslims are being massacred. To eliminate this unrest, humanity, has formulated various ideologies, implemented them, but all efforts have failed to bring peace. The question arises, where does Islam stand in this scenario? We know Islam is a complete way of life. Since Allah himself is the creator of this way of life, it cannot fail in any way. But the question is, why haven't we Muslims stood up to tackle the global crisis with the ideals of Islam? Because we do not consider it our responsibility. Despite being to hear to that ideal, we have divided ourselves into thousands of sects. Our religious scholars are engaged in unnecessary disputes, arguments and enmity with each other. Today, the Muslim world lacks censuries behind the advanced nations of the world in knowledge, science, technology, discovery, education, literature, culture, unity, discipline, military strength, and economic stability. Even in this age of advancement in knowledge and science, millions of Muslims are drowning in ignorance and illiteracy. Not only that, Muslims are divided into nearly 57 nation states. Within these Muslims majority countries, there are endless conflicts between hundreds of political parties. These conflicts have made Muslim countries dependent on Europe and America. They turn to the United Nations for solutions. Although the United Nations 70 year history is a history of failure. The United Nations has failed to establish human rights anywhere. Yet we continue to look to them for solutions. Allah, the Lord of the universes, has designated Arafat field as the place for the resolution of Muslims' crisis. He has given the method of Hajj. But from the conference of Hajj today, the Muslim world find no direction towards any solutions. Now, the proposal of Hizb Tawheed is, we who believe in Allah, believe in the Quran, and identify ourselves as a part of the Ummah -e Muhammadi, must now unite again. Because unity is Allah's directive. Allah has said, hold firmly together 
to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 103. A question may arise on what basis will we unite? The answer is we will unite based on the word upon which the Messenger of Allah united us. That is Tawheed. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Meaning, we will not accept the authority or laws of anyone other than Allah. Here the word Allah means he who is to be obeyed. Essentially, this was the unifying principle of Muslims. The next question is, what will we do after uniting? The answer is, after uniting, we will establish the Inul Haq, Allah's Deen on earth. As a result, humanity will be saved from injustice, tyranny, war and bloodshed. People will sleep with their doors open. Women will walk the street without fear. Human rights will be established. Equality will prevail. There will no exploitation and syndicates. No one will go hungry. A fair political system will be established in a state of corrupt political arrangement. With this framework and agenda, we are trying to spread out the true teaching of Islam. The joyous thing is, through this work, we are receiving the incomparable assistance of the Almighty Creator. We did not know how or through which modus operandi we would achieve our goals. But the Almighty Allah, in His infinite mercy, has provided us with the knowledge of that modus operandi which is Allah's own created plan. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, followed it himself and mentioned it in Hadith. It is as follows. Rasulullah, peace be upon him, said, Allah has ordered me in five matters and I am passing on these orders to you. Number one, unite. Number two, listen to the leader. Number three, obey the leader's order. Number four, make hijrah. And the last one, jihad fi sabilillah. This is our five itemed agenda. According to the modus operandi, the entire ummah, ummah the Muhammadi, will be one. There will be one leader and there will be one nation. Now we are struggling according to this modus operandi and presenting the true teaching of Islam to people. Another notable thing is, at present, religious extremism, terrorism and sectarianism have emerged as major crises facing people. In this regard, our statement is, if the correct aqidah of Islam or the overall concept can be presented to people, then they will change ideologically. Then no one will be involved in extremism and terrorism. Sectarian hatred and animosity will also not prevail. They will be united, disciplined, and agents of humanity's welfare. Dear brothers and sisters, from our discourse so far, you have surely understood the goals and objectives of Hezbut Tawheed we are working entirely, selflessly for the liberation of humanity. In this work, we have no political agenda, no economic self-interest. We are spreading our own money for the welfare of humanity. We hope that the thoughtful and peaceful people of the world will consider and accept our proposal. Visit our website to learn more about us and be sure to provide your valuable feedback. Thank you all. May Allah be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.